Do you want the good news or the bad news first? Close your eyes Get some rest I'm by your side Lay your head on my chest The good news is we finally have our first silver fox rabbit kits here on the farm. Full silver fox. It was a wonderful surprise to see that both Mrs. Robinson and Eleanor Rigby had had two kits each, but the babies are huge. The bad news is someone left the hot door open and by someone I mean me and Mrs. Robinson jumped ship. And I don't know, I don't know if she's going to come back. I've, I've walked around for a few hours to see if I could possibly find her. But there is absolutely no sign of her, and now we have to figure out what to do with her two babies, assuming that, what if she doesn't come back, you know? Uh, assume the worst, hope for the best. So these babies, I'm going to be marking their ears. That's a good thing about having two rabbits birth at around the same time so that if you do have to swap out, you can do a swap out. So I really saved myself there. Something else I wanted to mention, uh, thank you to all our commenters. We had a comment from Glenda Breck one week ago on our evaluating our silver fox rabbit video and she gave me a few suggestions on names and she said, love the rabbits, can you show how you made your rabbit hutches? So thank you so much for your comment and at your request, I am going to show you how I built my rabbit hutches. Pretty much all of my projects are recycled and on a budget. All my projects start in the two places I like to stockpile all my free material that I collect over time. We may be very minimal when it comes to purchasing home goods, but anytime we see free gutters, tin, any sort of building material, that's something that we stockpile in order to save money over, over the long haul. The very few pine boards I have left from our selection cut are 2x6, so I actually had to rip them on a table saw for this project, and the majority of the stick build is actually done in wood sticker stackers. I did this for a few reasons. It's free, and it's what I have lying around. It keeps the overall weight of the build down, because remember, we gotta be able to drag this thing around the yard every other day. Also importantly, any wood that goes into this build needs to be edible. It needs to be untreated because you can guarantee that the rabbits are going to nibble on it. Wire mesh is one thing I did have to buy for this project. 
I'm working in three foot wide chicken wire for the bottom frame and quarter inch square mesh for the sides. Another thing that I've learned the very hardest way is that you should always make sure that your doors to the outside yard are big enough where you can fit through them if you have to, to reach the other side of the rabbit tractor. These rabbit tractors are three feet in width I guess I just might have some short arms, but there is one of these tractors that I built the door way too small. And I had a rabbit chiller on the complete opposite side and I had to really to get in there. 
Another thing is you want to make sure that if these are made for does at your farm that you build the indoor area large enough to get a nest box in. Silver fox require a really large nest box. I am seeing that the babies are huge and so are the mamas and their neck pillows and they need a lot of room so just make sure you build your nest box to fit in there. And the door is big enough to get the nest box through also. One design thing that I figured out early on is the piece of wood that actually divides the outdoor yard for the rabbit. I learned very quickly that that actually helps train the rabbit and they actually, all four of them, depending on where I put that, they would poop in the area that was furthest away from their house. So if you made that a little bit smaller, they would poop in a smaller section of the outdoor hut, if that makes sense. Another tip that I have is very climate based. So you can see that I put the polycarbonate roofing on top of this. That can be a heat trap. Now our summers here in NNY are pretty short lived. I honestly think that we've already made it through the hottest part of the summer and we're now in the cool down. I put the polycarbonate in this design more based on fall, early spring, and going into winter weather for the rabbits if there was still forage out on the ground. We did have to be very mindful of where we placed them, facing the angle where the polycarb was away from the sun so that the sun would hit that shade wall and cast the shade over the building. But we also, at certain times, would have to always have them open, but be constantly running tillers, uh, frozen water bottles to keep everyone cool. We do slate tile to keep everyone cool. And also be mindful to always place them in a shaded area with a little bit of breeze. Another part of this design I'd just like to point out is that the bottom was fenced with chicken wire. I do believe that weasels could get through chicken wire if they had time to dig under the mainframe. Because of how often these are rotated when they do have rabbits in them, I'm not really all that worried of a weasel being able to mastermind that in a day and a half. I'm waiting to be proven wrong, knock on wood. The chicken wire was chosen because these are made so the rabbits do have access to that forage, but that they're not able to pull up the root structure and leave the ground completely bare. I still want the roots to be there in the ground. They're doing a really good job at that so far. My only and biggest complaint and I think it's because we just passed through the main peak of our summer heat is that we don't have a lot of shaded area to put them in. Now I, I could run them through the woods, but then what, what would it be doing for me? They're not really clearing up where I need to be cleared. So it's a little bit of a trade-off trying to figure out oh, where to place them. Also, if you're not using two by twos and one by ones like I ended up using in the end, my very, very first rabbit wheelbarrow I made was called the Tank, and she was about 100 pounds. And I got really strong moving her around the yard, and that's about the only good thing that happened with that. And so I learned to use two by twos in smaller wood so that it still had enough structure but wasn't flimsy and that the weight was so much lower. All in all, I believe that these are well under 50 pounds each. And keep in mind that they are seven feet by three feet. So that is, you're giving your buns a lot of room. Oh my goodness, look who's back. I should buy a lot of tickets because I'm feeling really lucky. 
I just honestly we've had bunnies run away before and I just did not think she was gonna be back thank goodness and so her babies that I had marked are rightfully back in her nest Let's give her a little tasty treat. Just to let them know that we missed her a little bit. <laughs> 